Okay. We'll call this uh, meeting to order for the City of Saratoga Springs, Tuesday, February 5th, 2019. Um, tonight we'll have Councilman Wilden offer our invocation. Uh, Councilman Barch, will you lead us in our pledge? We have Councilman Porter, Councilman Barch, Councilman Comber, Councilman Wilden. So we do have a quorum tonight present. And we'll go on to the prayer. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful that we're able to be gathered in here this evening as a council and be able to be presented with items that we can evaluate and, and make decisions to help improve our community for our, our neighbors, our family, and our city. And we ask you to bless us that we can be inspired to do those things that thou would have us do. And these things we say in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ, amen. Will the audience please rise and follow me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Okay, public input. Uh, time has been set aside for the public to express ideas, concerns, and comments for subjects matters not listed on the agenda. There's no public hearings tonight. Is anybody here for public input? Okay, seeing none, I will close the public input. We have a presentation from the fire department. Mayor and Council, it's, it's absolutely my pleasure to be here tonight with you. This is a moment of recognition. Um, a moment of recognition for a couple of individuals within our organization, but uh, beyond that, uh, this is a moment of recognition for you as a mayor and council and a city that we are honored to be a part of. Um, we're not individuals or organizations or an industry that care for a lot of pomp and circumstance. We uh, like to kind of fly under the radar, but this is a moment that uh, we have to honor a couple of individuals that have done very well in a promotional process, but I think more importantly, the individuals that have supported them, uh, and again, uh, you as, as mayor and council uh, in our support, or thanking you for our support uh, in our growth. This is kind of a watermark for us as an organization. Uh, we hope we've had several. We hope to have many more as we continue to grow and develop into uh, uh, just an incredible uh, city and uh, a place to live and be. So without uh, any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, the two individuals that we're honoring here tonight are Lieutenant Ryan Rackman and Lieutenant Cindy Combs. And we're going to have a uh, formal badge pinning uh, ceremony that uh, uh, Ryan has asked his wife, Mercedes, and. Cindy has asked her mother, Coy, probably two women that are uh, incredibly responsible for where they are in, in their lives today, to take that honor and uh, pin them with their lieutenant's badge. So if you would please come on up. Everyone has to jump politics. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> right. This is like, we're going to do a full calendar spread for you. <laughs> <laughs> 
of Saratoga. Why are people in Saratoga Springs? <laughs> okay, you. thank you. Thank you. Okay, reports. Um, today we had the chamber um, luncheon to present the Business of the Year Awards. Uh, Councilman McComber and Councilman Porter were able to attend with me. Um, as per our discussion here at Council, we, rec we recognized Smith's Marketplace for their early investment into us and their continued reinvestment into our community um, on that. and. They rebranded they re the Area Chamber of Commerce today from the Lehigh City Area Chamber of Commerce to... What? Yeah. I forgot the name. Oh, Point of the Mountain. <laughs> when you said that, my mind went blank. <laughs> Point of the Mountain Chamber of Commerce and uh, rebranded it uh, to be more inclusive and allow for businesses in multiple cities that work with each other to, to network. Um, with, with Crossroads of, the, of Utah as the tagline as we're the, kind of the epicenter of growth for Utah right now. Um, so it, it's a great thing. It's been a long time coming. So just a question, Mayor. Are they including then Draper and Bluffdale and those guys in that? Potentially. Not, not today. Yet. They're always welcome. Got it. Eagle it's Mountain, curious, Draper, just... American Fork, Highland. Okay. But there's already been time. Councilwoman Barch, there's a <coughs> you had Councilwoman your... Barch. There yeah. are there are a number of businesses oh. from Draper and other cities that are part of the chamber, which is part of why it finally came to needing a change in, in the name. So Owen oh, switched the mic buttons so that he's the city manager button. <laughs> 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 I kept looking at Mark, and he's like, I don't know. <laughs> okay, Councilwoman Porter. Um, I just, um, I know that Councilwoman Barch will probably touch on uh, local officials' day in the Youth Council. So um, I will talk about, uh, we had, uh, Councilman Podeska and I had the opportunity um, the last week to, uh, to go and present at Lakeview Academy. Um, it was a really... Uh, Great experience, and the, the kids there have a great understanding of um, civics, uh, especially for the age that they are. And so it was it was gratifying to see them understand uh, not only some of the more nuanced um, facts about local government, but also to you know understand principles of of good governance. So, okay, Councilman Wilden. Um, Owen, if you'd pass this along to Heston to pass along to the junior Heston's general. right there if you want. To oh, you're here. Her. Sorry, I didn't see it. I knew you were going to say something. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I have uh, two boys in junior jazz, and so I see both their games and the preceding games. Very impressed of how the refs handle themselves with certain coaches and adults that aren't being good examples. I'll just leave it at that. Mark told me not to say idiot or moron. So I'm not going to refer to them as that. Um, but they don't handle themselves in a very good way, and I'm very impressed by these 16-year-old kids <laughs> that are respectful, and I just tell them good job. I think they're doing a good job. And I'd be okay if they felt empowered to call technicals on some of the coaches. So they, they are doing a great job. Yeah. So I didn't use those words. He would, he would be giving technicals if he was out there rapping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would. So, no, they do a great job. I, the young kids, fit, uh, how, can some of them even be 15? We go down to 14, but we'll never have an official do the same thing. So they're always older than the kids that are fishing. Yeah. So, I mean, these are 14, 15 year old kids that do a phenomenal job. So, I'll just tell them all thank you. So, that was my one update, and I'll let Councilman, not man, Councilwoman Barge talk to <laughs> about the league meeting. <laughs> Okay, Councilwoman Park. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so two items, we did have our local officials day uh, up at the Capitol meeting with our legislators and also having the youth council up there. We had 15, 16 youth council members go with us and it was really neat to see them. Uh, they all wanted, this year they did a little bit different. Normally we go up there and they have a bill that they do a mock debate on and then they go and see something cool and then they go to lunch with us. Um, 
and the legislators. This year they broke it up and they actually did a couple of different sessions. And one of the sessions that they had three they could choose from, or three sessions and they could choose from different items on each session. One of them was the debate and then there were a couple other things. Almost every one of our kids chose to do the debate. They wanted to go in there and figure out how the laws work and figure out um, how legislative processes work in general. It was really fun and they were, um, our kids were great. One of our kids, even though we weren't sent the information on the bill, went and found it on his own and did all this research and had like his whole little portfolio with him. It was pretty impressive. And um, then we also had several others. Anyway, they were making comments and it was good to see our youth council understand the true process and to hear their comments, even if they didn't make them at the microphone of, well, you can't do that, that's against procedure, or that doesn't make any sense because of the consequences of the law that would happen, or the lack of freedoms and the freedoms that it would take away, those kinds of things. So it's just nice to see that our council has, they have some good values, we'll put it that way, and, and they're gonna be great leaders. Um, and then the other item is, we also have attended our first um, ledge policy meeting at the Capitol during the session, and they are going fast and furious. There are already some, what, five, almost six, I don't know, ridiculous number of bills already and we're one week into it. <laughs> so um, lots of items we're gonna be watching. Thus far, nothing too serious. The major ones on um, affordable housing and whether or not they were gonna penalize us as cities. St um, Jake Andreg, Senator Andreg is running that and he thus far has kept the penalties off of that bill and thus far has made it just a menu of options um, that different cities can choose from. So what, so what we've talked about, well, he's getting lots of pressure. I don't think it'll happen in the Senate. I think when it goes to the House, they'll try to do it. Thus far, he is, feels very strongly that they'll be able to keep that, that out. So we'll see how that goes. Okay. Perfect. Mark, do you have anything? It's your turn. <laughs> he's, he's the manager. Okay. <laughs> So we, we, we fixed that. So just following up with Councilwoman Barch's comments, um, one of the things that is, is quite unique with the affordable housing bill, and Jake, uh, Senator Andreg, is very um, consistent in saying he wants to offer us incentives, and he's tying it to the TIF funding. So if we have these elements in our general plan and if we have these elements in our, in our housing plans, that it would, it would offer us an incentive. And he wants to keep it very much incentivized. There are those that would like to try and make it punitive, which includes the Salt Lake Chamber Bureau. Um, ironically, the Salt Lake Chamber Bureau is now being led by someone who used to work for a developer uh, as, a, I, I believe, a lobbyist, and so there's a tremendous amount of influence that they have with the Salt Lake Chamber. The affordable housing issue appears to be driven largely by politics coming out of, of that agency and group. And so uh, it's a unique situation, um, obviously uh, something that we're closely monitoring and obviously very concerned about. Um, I did want to talk about a couple of bills. Um, you may have seen the article in the uh, newspaper uh, a few days ago. Uh, Lance from our water department was talking about water consumption and uh, the metering project, the success we've had with metering. Uh, just you know, as a, a, a quick step back in time, um, metering came about several years ago when some of the development community said, look, um, the, the cost of development is really high and you're requiring a lot of water. And so we agreed to implement metering as a way to be able to try and curtail the overconsumption of water. And we've seen significant uh, reductions in the amount of water that's being used. Um, that along with our fixed network system that we're implementing, which gives people the ability to know and understand and control their consumption, um, we're getting very close to having um, just a, a first class uh, transparency in our water system so people can choose how much water they're gonna use. And so we're very excited about that. Um, probably won't finish the, um, the full implementation of the fixed network system until a little bit later in the, in the summer. We were hoping to have it done by the 1st of April when water turns on. It's just, it's taking a lot of time. Um, we've got uh, about 3,000 homes currently that are on the fixed network system that we're able to, to read uh, uh, just a real-time um, system. It updates about every hour. It's fantastic. We're really excited about that. Um, so that's moving forward. And Senator Andreg's bill on secondary water really is trying to get the state to think about water conservation. Um, if, if you recall, a few months ago, I was asked to speak to the Executive Water Finance Board, and it was relative to the billion and a half dollar pipeline for the Lake Powell pipeline. 
um, there was a lot of concern as to whether the cost of water would be prohibitive and, and the arguments that were being made in the southern part of the state where no one would pay $20,000 for an acre foot of water. Well, ironically, central Utah water is not too far off of that. And so that was part of the conversation that we had. And so people are still pulling permits and we are paying that, that cost for central Utah water. And if we're paying almost that amount here in, in northern Utah County, um, I don't know that it's going to uh, destroy the development activities in Washington County uh, if they fully fund their own. Uh, instead, they're asking the state to bond for that billion and a half dollars and to help subsidize that. Maybe only a partial repayment as opposed to a full repayment because, quote unquote, $20,000 is too much per, per acre foot. So uh, again, uh, those are some of the issues uh, that we're looking at relative to that. Uh, there's uh, an important point on the sales tax bill, and I apologize uh, for taking so long tonight, but uh, there's uh, appearing to be some desire to, to broaden the base of sales tax. And broadening the base of sales tax is probably something that most people would say, okay, that's a concept that we should all look, look at. Um, the irony is, is, is broadening the base brings with it a whole lot of, of changes and people don't want to see a windfall. Um, some are looking at the potential of broadening the base as an opportunity to renegotiate the 50-50 distribution of sales tax. Currently, sales tax is, is collected for every $1 of sales tax. 50 cents of it is, is um, based on the point of sale, where the sale actually occurs, and 50% of that, or 50 cents, is then um, based on the population of the, the, of the city. So a really large city is going to be doing quite well because they have a lot of population, so there are probably going to be winners on that, whereas small cities will be losers, and they may only be getting a fraction of that 50% 50, uh, 50 because of the statewide distribution of sales tax. Um, some people are politically motivated to try and force this issue, and, and basically um, they're trying to draw a nexus between sales tax distribution and affordable housing. And, um, and they want to do away with this methodology that has been long tried, tested, very defensible, it makes a lot of sense, um, and they're, they're trying to attack that methodology for whatever political reasons, and so we're obviously very concerned about that. Um, obviously, we understand that there's probably not gonna be a windfall if they broaden the base, but there's no reason to mess with the 50-50 distribution based on whatever that base ends up being. Um, and so please, you know, keep that in mind. Again, I, I wanted to take a moment to talk with you all about that. Should you have any interactions with our legislators or as the issue more of an issue, we feel that it's, a, it's the right place for it to be and have long held that position as a League of Cities and Towns. Um, it's defensible. Uh, when we start messing with that and putting it based on affordability, house, housing affordability or whatever, it's just, it's the, it, it, there's no nexus. It's just politically motivated, and so we would ask that you would, you know, um, you know, help share that if if the issue comes up. Um, that's really all I had from a legislative update. Um, it is that that silly time of year, and it's going to be a fast and furious year. I think that there's going to be a lot of bills uh, that will be very aggressively uh, going after municipalities on the affordable housing bill that we talked briefly about before it really won't impact as a city. We already offer several of those items that, that we would be eligible for the TIF funding. Um, my understanding is, is the intent is not to hit cities like us, like Harriman, like other high growth cities that already have anticipated these things. This is to hit the cities that have closed their doors towards development and said, hey, we now allow uh, apartment units in our one acre lot uh, homes. We're doing our part for, for high density housing and for affordable housing. And I think that's where the legislature is drawing a line in the sand saying, no, you're not. And you're either going to play or lose your TIF funding going forward. So I think those are the, the cases that they're really focused on. Other than that, Mayor and Council, thank you very much. Um, we just have that one item. Uh, <laughs> Councilwoman Bartsch. Uh, question for Mark on clarification on the, on the water. When that water um, metering system is up where they can do the live feed on that. Is that going to be attached to our app so those residents have just one app that they can either do? Unfortunately, it would be a separate app. Um, that app is kind of proprietary to the iTron uh, technology system. We could certainly try and program something uh, differently, uh, but um, they're two separate providers, two separate vendors. Um, we can certainly look into it if that's something you want us to do. It would make more sense not to have to have multiple apps for the city if you could somehow integrate them, link them, 
create a bridge of some yeah. kind. I, I would so. like to say uh, when we turned over zone uh, three, which is pretty much all of Harvest Hills, so again, about 3,000 accounts that are currently on that, um, it, it went really, really smooth. Uh, it took the first the first neighborhood convert, converting over to work out a lot of the bugs. Mm -hmm. The second one, I think it was about a 95% read rate uh, when we first initiated it, which is incredibly high. And these are some of the older meters in the system, so we anticipate that we'll continue to have good success. So uh, very likely, but I'll make a note of that and we'll see what we can do. And then the second thing, just as a comment again on that taxing, the one thing we do want to watch is when they start to talk about where they want to broaden the base on the, on the taxes, they're talking about um, taxing some of the services. And so depending on how much they drop the tax rate and depending on which services they include, it actually could be detrimental to us. For example, if they start taxing, for example, ski school, well, it doesn't affect us here. If they drop the rate dramatically, we could see a loss of sales tax because ski school is not going to help us at all. So we'll just keep an eye on those kinds of things. Okay. Perfect. We'll move on to business items. Business item six, uh, the consolidated fee schedule amendment for Patriot Park fees, resolution R19-7. So that Heston can get home since he was patient last week. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, since we've released this to the public, uh, we've had a few people question whether or not they can just rent three fields at a time instead of the whole park or just one field at a time. If they rent one field at a time, it is pretty expensive if they want to add fields to it. And then if they need the whole, they don't need the whole park, they don't want to spend the whole price for that. So uh, just adding in the option to rent three fields out of Patriot Park is, is what we're doing. So. Okay. Any questions, Porter? My, my only question is, would it be like they would rent half of the complex or it would because be. I, I, we have one small one on each side and so would they want, would it just be three random it, fields? It would be the half, um, um, we wouldn't let them pick the fields and say it's half the complex or half, you know, the other okay. half the complex. It, it really comes into when we have to open the separate bathrooms on, on the two different well, complexes. Well that and it's just, exactly. it's a lot more convenient if you can tell citizens that are wanting to use the fields. This is this side's reserved. This side's open, rather than like, oh, we can go on that one, but not that one, and that one, but not that one. Yes. So, yeah. Yep. That, that's great. Okay. So, uh, <coughs> you said Providence Hall's using it as their home field. They yes, first softball. Softball. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay. Any questions from other questions? I will entertain a motion. I move that we approve the consolidated fee schedule amendment for Patriot <laughs> Park fees, resolution R19-7, dated today. I'll second. I have a first from Councilman Porter, a second from Councilwoman Barch. Any further discussion on the motion? Wilden? Aye. McComber? Aye. Barch? Aye. Porter? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We have the Interlocal Cooperation Agreement for Substance Abuse Prevention and Communities That Care Prevention Model Resolution R19-4. This is just a renewal of our Communities That Care contract that we've done for the past several years. Okay. If there's no comments, I'll entertain a motion. Which item is this? I'm, Number one. I'm not going to make any motions. Thank I'll, you. I'll, okay. I'll move that we approve business <laughs> item one, resolution R19-4, dated today. I'll second. I have a first from Councilman Wilden, a second from Councilwoman Barch. Any further discussion? Wilden? Aye. McComber? Aye. Barch? Aye. Porter? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Amendment to the General Plan Transportation Master Plan Ordinance 19-5. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, uh, this item came before the Council a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> uh, we had a couple of last minute changes that created a little bit of confusion. Uh, plus the Council requested that we show uh, the changes in red. And so uh, uh, we've done that and um, entertain any questions for you at this point. Yeah. Council on Barch. So uh, I, thank you for all the red lines. I appreciate that. I love that you included the Eagle Mountains master plans and, and Lehigh's master plans. That was very helpful. Um, my one comment is 
you still didn't update the maps. It's still a 2016 map and a 2012. It just, it doesn't make any sense. I understand that we'll be updating regularly and you can go to the website and it says go to the website. It doesn't make sense to start with an outdated plan. I've seen the, the activity or the uh, active development 14,000 times on Mark's computer. Grab the new one and put it on there. <laughs> it just, it's a little, I mean, this is the third time I've asked for this. Please, 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 please put the updated maps on there. It doesn't make sense. Can I Please. So what we did is we took, we took the last adopted version of the master plan and showed all the locations that were updated. So, the, so all the things in red are showing changes from that previous master plan. I do have with me, I mean, the actual updated master plan that, that will have that, those updated figures in there. <clears throat> is there a reason why the active development can't be shown as the current active development. I mean, for goodness sakes, it's got Murphy's Oil as an active development, and it's got all these different things that are done and have been done for years as, as active development. It doesn't make sense to me. There's no reason why we can't replace that map. We'll happily make that change. Please. Uh, as part of <laughs> your motion. Okay. Okay. With that, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move that we approve amendments to the general plan and transportation master plan ordinance 19-5 dated today, including updating of all maps to the current map, most current map possible. Okay, I have a first from Councilwoman Barch. Second. Second from Councilman Porter. Any further discussion on the motion? Okay. Wilden? Aye. McComber? Aye. Barch? Aye. Porter? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. We have amendment to the engineering standard technical specifications and drawings manual parking ordinance 19-7. So I'll just stay right here. Um, so last, last time uh, we had uh, the council adopted everything except the angled on-street parking. Uh, there were some issues with that. Uh, one was the setback. Council expressed a desire to have uh, at least five feet. And uh, so we, we looked at that. The normal setback from the normal location of the sidewalk is 20 feet. And with the configuration that we've uh, given you tonight, uh, the setback will be seven and a half feet. So the normal setback of you know where wherever the buildings are normally if you project that setback along it'll be seven and a half feet from the sidewalk so that meets that requirement um, meets the council's desires with regard to setback uh, walkable sidewalk council expressed a desire to have uh, at least five feet of passable uh, sidewalk and um, i went out and took uh, measurements of vehicles parked against the curb on an angle like this the overhang is about a foot, and so uh, what you see there is is a five and a half foot sidewalk, and then you add the the curb, and that that's a foot, and that leaves you five feet of passable. Um, and then the last issue was the depth of the parking stall. Um, I used a Chevy Suburban as a typical vehicle, <coughs> and uh, Chevy Suburban is 18 feet eight inches long, and the depth of these stalls is 19 feet four inches. Which, and there won't be a lot of, because these people are living in townhomes, they don't need big suburbans. So we went to the extreme. They probably need them. <laughs> we went to the extreme, which I appreciate. It sounds like it exceeds it, so. Okay. That's my understanding. It's these people, uh, so, one or two kids, Matt. Mayor and Council, just uh, from an observation, uh, Chris L with the R. Horton raised several of these concerns. I think we've addressed those concerns, is that correct? So uh, with that, we would look for your approval of these exhibits tonight. Just, Councilwoman Barsh brought up something that I'm, I think, well, yours is different than <gasps> mine. I only have one. I'm not, it popped up. <laughs> well, the, the, the one I'm looking at has, has a yeah, five foot six inch sidewalk for the, the flat part, not the, and then six foot six. She was looking, she had two different there figures. There are two different figures in my Mine packet. Only has so the first packet that got sent to you was before. Um, Changed so yeah. Did the measurement on the uh, Yes, the, the first one that you saw was based on the assumption that the, 
that on an angle, it would still be a two foot overhang. Mm -hmm. And that w assumption was wrong. I went out and took some measurements with it on an angle. Like five different cars. Yeah. So of the two different versions that it's, I have in my packet, it's this the six foot, six foot six behind the bumped out sidewalk is the old version, right? It's five and a half, yeah. And so the five and a half is the new And then new the, five, the six inch curve. Yeah, that's yeah so now a little clarification. There is a nuance here. The, uh, the sidewalk in front of the last stall because wider. that one wider because it is wider because you can pull straight up into that one. Okay. And, and just clarification then on setback. So th you're going to have at least five feet from the back of the sidewalk before you get to a building, you said? It'll be seven and a half feet. Seven seven because of that 20 foot normal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, perfect. Good. Why don't we put Thank you for doing all that work. It's just because all the foot and a half. One. Okay, yeah. I will entertain a motion. <laughs> I'll move that we approve the amendment to the engineering and technical standards and specifications drawing manual parking ordinance 19-7 dated today. I'll second. Yeah, first from Councilwoman Bartsch, second from Councilman McComber. Any further discussion on the motion? Porter? Aye. Bartsch? Aye. McComber? Aye. Wilden? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. We have the interlocal agreement amending and adjoining Central Utah 911 resolution R19-5. This is actually a different one, Chief. Um, yep. So this is just the name changes of the dispatch <coughs> district. The, the, the lieutenant governor basically wanted all the cities to go back, readopt these ordinances. This hopefully is the end of this, and it's just kind of a technical cleanup at this point. We still have 911 service, even though it's under a different name. Okay. Then I will entertain a motion to keep the service we still have. <laughs> I'll move approval of business item four, resolution R19 5 dated today. I'll <coughs> second. First from Councilman Wilden, a second from Councilman Porter. Any further discussion on the motion? Still not Central Utah, they're morons. There, I said it for you, Gabby. Okay. Hey, mine was on water from Central Utah. We might as well get our 911 from them, too. So. <laughs> Porter? Aye. Bartsch? Aye. Mayor? <laughs> that's me. Uh, McComber, Wilden. Uh, that's I, <laughs> no, that's I, I don't even get to vote. I, <laughs> wow. Vote you voted. <laughs> I said I. I. Make him laugh. <laughs> Motion passes unanimously. Don't make me. <laughs> okay. Multi-jurisdictional mutual aid agreement resolution R19-6. Okay, Mayor and Council. This one's mine. This is yours. Yes. Now, this is a renewal of the agreement that we signed four years ago. Uh, Kevin Thurman, our city attorney, participates on the attorney's group that works up this agreement, and he's worked with the team to put it together and then reviewed the final product. So, Sounds like an amazing team. There's no questions. I'll entertain a motion. I move that we approve the multi-jurisdictional mutual aid agreement, resolution R19-6, stated today. I'll second. I have a first from Councilman Porter, second from Councilwoman Barch. Any further discussion on the motion? Wilden? Thank you. Aye. McComber? Aye. Barch? Aye. Porter? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. What about mayor? It's quick. You want to vote I know, mayor? I forgot myself. But we're going to elect the mayor pro tem. As a discussion, typically we've rotated that. Um, if we kind of go with the rotation, it's probably back to Councilman Wilden because we've tried to stay off the year of people's uh, seats that are in an election. Mm -hmm. the Councilman McComber is just finishing, and the other three seats are up. Yep. So that would be my recommendation if the council would like I to make a motion. Right. Makes sense. I mean, the only other thing is if someone wasn't running, I'd be okay. But I think at the same time, let's just do it this way. It's simple. Okay. Keeps it clean. Keep the rotation going. Then I will entertain a motion. I'll move that we approve uh, Councilmember Stephen Wilden as Mayor Pro Tem for this year. Do we approve or appoint or, I'm sorry. I think it's approved. I know it, approve. whatever. Good. Approve I'll second. Appoint. Approve and appoint. <laughs> I have a first from Councilwoman Bartsch, second from Councilman Porter. Any further discussion? Wilden. <laughs> All right. We were gonna both vote no, and they're gonna vote yes to make you vote. Okay, that works. <laughs> okay, Wilden. Aye. McComber. Aye. Barge. Aye. Porter. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. We have the minutes from January 15th, 2019. <coughs> that we approve them with the ones that were emailed and posted out outside. Okay, I have first from Councilman McComber. Second. Second from Councilman Wilden. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Oh, we have oh. need for closed session. <laughs> okay, and it's Councilman McComber's birthday coming up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Thanks, guys.
You like what I wrote. 45, I'm the old guy on the council. Okay, we have one very quick closed session. We're being told by OJ. Okay. I'm the oldest on the council. Six months. Okay. Like six months. You'll like Do I have a motion? I have a first from Councilwoman Barch. Second. Second Councilwoman Comber. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. We will go into closed session. He gave you that much? Oh. Okay, we need to turn off the cameras. Oops, no, no, no. no.